everyone, this is your instructor Joy. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your nice comments, questions, and donations. Um, please keep sending me your questions. A subscriber is um, playing an orchestra um, right now, working on the Tchaikovsky Serenade, um, and asking whether there's a specific rules or structure um, when it comes to orchestral playing, like bow wings, for example. So, um, when you're playing orchestral pieces, it's a, a bit different approach. Remember, it's not you alone, you're supposed to blend in in the groove. Whether you're concert, ma concert master or principal players, still you should uh, work towards the ensemble playing, meaning uh, you should be together with the group. So in orchestral playing, number one important one is same bowing. <laughs> so you've seen in, or in concerts, so when we all go up, make sure you are up as well. When everybody goes down, make sure you, your bow goes up as well. When, everybody, and when your group stops playing, no matter where you are, just take your bow off. Stop right there. Um, and learn to be in the group. Let's see, you, you, when, normally when we play solo, we sometimes you know, allow ourselves to slow down or faster for many different reasons in orchestra. Uh, it's not up to us. So learn to be in a group, uh, learn to read conductors, con uh, conducting figure. So either it's two, three, or four. Um, understand the downbeat and the last beat so that you can be with a group. That way you can take as a little guidance. And just listening surroundings is always helpful. But bowing is very important. Number two important one when playing orchestra pieces is rhythm. Rhythm, um, so try to be, when it comes in orchestra playing, a precise rhythm is even more important than solo playing. Because um, when you are a little off the rhythm, uh, the whole group falls apart. You know what I mean? Every bar, like a Swiss watch, it's like, it has to, you have to keep going like a little machine sometimes. Sometimes you're allowed to play a little rubato, a little slowing down, a little faster. When you happen to play melody within the given rhythm, so you can push and pull, meaning get slower and faster, but you have to still stay within the given rhythm. But when you are playing like 16th notes or fast note, and just be like a mechanical, a Swiss watch, like a motoric word. So, rhythm very important. And of course, then comes intonation and nice sound, all that one. So, now, how do we know which bowing is? How, how do, just in general, what bowing do we do? Of course, there are many details and exceptions too, but in general, uh, because of the gravity, our down bow tend to get louder, our up bow tend to get a little softer. Uh, of course, one can master to to control that, but just in general, down bow tend to get a little louder, heavier sound. Therefore, we tend to use almost always down bow for the first beat of each measure. Whether it's 2 4, time signature 2 4, 3 4, 4 4, 6, 8, whatever number is, first beat always gets the strongest beat. So, um, that's how we like to do. So here, like, so first dumbo always gets the uh, strongest beat, therefore we like to use dumbo. But it's um, not always the case. Sometimes uh, the music, meaning the melody line, does not always start from the beat one. Sometimes starts with a three or it has a pickup. Pick up is a little note that connects to the next first downbeat. Um, let's see, like here. So uh, this is downbeat, but here, kind of below. So even though this one, that's where. So um, sometimes you just 
if it's slurred over, you just use down notes so that your down beat can be louder. Or when um, when you start melody, like this very beginning of Tchaikovsky's Serenade, um, second movement waltz, it's that's like waltz is of the one, two, three, one. <laughs> so that I can get fuller start. Here I like to do a little uh, down bow for sure, even though it's um, second beat, because it's I want to give a little accent. So there's a, also another point, another way that we like to use down bow when it has accent. So the end of the phrase, almost always we like to tapering down, make diminuendo. Then it's easier way to do when you just use simple up bow, like that, yeah? Uh, then um, when you have a repeating motive, in this case, there is something like this. And then it happens again. So whenever this uh, motive, this certain same kind of rhythm, same kind of idea repeats, it is a good idea to use same bow every time. Because when it happens multiple times, if you play one down bow, once up bow, um, you, you can, your body can get confused. So when it's a repeating motive, it is a good idea to use same bow. So you could do up or other down bow. But here where I have a spiccato, so which I need to be near the frog in order to uh, sp uh, spread it. So then I just use and I don't go up or half so that I can be ready for a spiccato. Yeah. And sometimes uh, we have no choice, even though it's rare, to keep the same bowing then maybe you make once or twice an exception but it is a good idea in general when it's repeating motive to use the same bowing now um, another important part when you're playing orchestra when there's a lot of runs a lot of fast sixteenth notes don't get caught up with the small details try to be just in in time uh, in the first bit of each note but don't worry about every single note if you can play every note, good for you, then it's great. But until then, just learn your first priority should be always be with the group, be within the ensemble. Now, if you are a concert master or principal player, so that you have to pick the bow wing uh, or sometimes even suggest a fingering, I find the common mistakes of many concert masters and uh, principal players are they sometimes don't always um, pick the bowing that works for everybody. Um, you know, um, because simply they can play, or uh, simply uh, if you are a concert master or principal, simply you find it a great idea, let's say instead of going, you want to go to, sorry. You want to go all the way to G high string because it has a warm sound. The idea is good and you can do that when you're playing solo piece. But remember, the groups, it may may not be able to do that. Remember in orchestra playing, uh, you don't always have luxury of uh, rehearsing endlessly. You just sometimes just one rehearsal. If you're lucky, maybe a little more. So you have to pick the right bowing as fingerings and that's easy enough for everybody meaning every single player of the group being able to play um, and you might have to compromise but it's still better for the group being able to play it nice and clean than struggling yeah so um, then sometimes just simply playing for the group if you happen to be a concert master or principal can give a clearer idea because let's say not everybody knows what part of bow is a properly proper part of the bow to make it easier. So here, so you might just 
suggest, you know, you stand up for the group and then just play. They're suggesting to stay near there. Or sometimes there's that very, very soft part. Yeah, here. A common mistake the uh, string players tend to use all the because there, there are many difficult notes and we tend to get caught up. Then maybe uh, help the group to understand this is not about individual note, but it's about creating the mood, uh, the atmosphere. So help them to, you can suggest maybe stay at the tip or tilt it and bend a little bow. Or, or like that. Or if you're just a section player, you can also uh, analyze those. Um, as a section player, if you suggest certain bowings and certain ideas, Concert masters or principal players that may or may not like it, so <laughs> you have to be careful with that. But you know, always honest, good, uh, well meant in a very friendly way. Uh, such comments can be helpful. I appreciate when um, section players give an idea, and sometimes you know the solutions can come from any sources. So. Um, I hope this video was helpful. There are a lot of things that you can um, learn and have a lot of fun in orchestra playing. But uh, just remember it, you have to focus on a big picture, meaning uh, just don't get caught up with a little many details. Details come later, but learn to focus on a big picture. Yeah? I hope this video was helpful. Thank you very much for watching.